Imperial Battling Academy. It is here that you will learn to hone your skills as Pokemon trainers and prepare to unleash the might of the Empire upon your enemies. When you leave this academy, you will have the knowledge and the skill to maintain absolute calm in battle situations and be able to dominate all adversaries. I am joined by Flight Officer Montague, and he will be your instructor throughout this lesson. Now, be mindful of what you learn here today, and serve the Emperor well. Thank you, Lord Vader, for gracing us with your presence. I am Flight Officer Montague, and I shall be your instructor for this lesson. The primary goal of this lesson is to show you that battles are not over until they are over. Even when the chips are down, we must continue to fight, and hopefully we shall prevail. This is also a case study on the effectiveness of Choice Scarf Moxie Heracross, and the immense power that it provides for any team. As you can tell by this team preview, there are two standard Pokemon battle formations aligned against each other. The biggest threat to our battle formation is most likely Chandelure, as it can attack both Bishop and Heracross for super effective damage, as well as Azelf and our own Chandelure. Quagsire and Togekiss will prove to be useful as they are our defensive Pokemon. Everything else is either offensive or support. Also note that the opposing team has a Heracross of their own. We must eliminate it quickly to prevent it from revenge killing any of our offensive Pokemon. Briefing will only get us so far, let's continue into the battle. As you can see, our battler has chosen to lead with Azelf. After taking a U-turn from Crobat, he makes the grievous mistake of going for Taunt. Weavile does not have a boosting move of any kind, and so Azelf is subsequently punished with a Night Slash. Our battler sends in Quagsire to take the next physical attack, and the opponent sends out Crobat. Now Crobat goes for Taunt, this will prevent Quagsire from using anything other than its sole attack. So our battler must switch out into Bisharp. Bisharp takes Crobat's Brave Bird admirably, so now the opponent must switch out. He decides to switch out into Nidoking, possibly to hit Bisharp with some sort of fire type attack, as we go for a substitute. Our battler wisely goes for the Sucker Punch, as Nidoking goes for Earth Power. Hoping to preserve his Nidoking, the opposing battler switches out into Empoleon, as our battler resets up the substitute. Our battler wisely goes for Brick Break on Empoleon, as our opponent goes for Roar. Roar sends in Togekiss, and our battler wisely goes for the Thunder Wave. Empoleon is now paralyzed, and so speed will drop. Attempting to paraflinch this Empoleon, our Togekiss goes for Air Slash. This continues for several more turns. Realizing that Togekiss' mediocre offenses are not enough to win the day, we switch out into Heracross and go for close combat as he switches out to Crobat. Now Crobat's 4x resistance to fighting takes that close combat admirably, and so we are forced to switch out to Quagsire to prevent a Brave Bird from killing our Heracross. Crobat goes for Taunt, that again prevents Quagsire from using anything other than Waterfall. Crobat goes for Roost to gain his health back, and unfortunately Waterfall is not going to be able to kill this Crobat, so we must switch out. We decide to go into Bishop. Our battler goes for the Sucker Punch, but which does not work because Crobat does not go for an attacking move. He switches out to Chandelure as we try to hit it with Brick Break, but unfortunately that does not seem to work. This Chandelure is packing Substitute, a rather odd choice for a Chandelure. And so we must switch out into Togekiss to prevent a Fire Blast from taking out our Bishop. Now we must lower this Substitute in order, to, uh, in order to attack this Chandelure, so Togekiss goes for Air Slash. Final Fire Blast dispatches of Togekiss, and we must send in our next Pokémon. We decide to send in Chandelure in an attempt to hit the Chandelure with super effective damage, but unfortunately our opponent wisely switches to Weavile. Our battler sends in Quagsire to take the physical attack, but unfortunately Quagsire suffers a critical hit. 
and is subsequently dispatched with an ice punch. So now we must send in Bishop to take on this Weavile, and he switches out to Crobat. Crobat is resistant to all of Bishop's moves except for Sucker Punch. Sensing the taunt, our battler switches out into Chandelure in an attempt to kill this Crobat. Fire Blast misses, and, which is unfortunate, and Crobat subsequently dispatches Chandelure with a Brave Bird. So now all that is left is Bisharp and Heracross. So now Heracross enters the field as Crobat U-turns out. He switches out to Chandelure in a desperate attempt to gain some super effective damage against, Shan against Heracross. Heracross dispatches the Chandelure and subsequently gains a Moxie boost. Heracross survives a close combat from the opposing Heracross. And another Stone Age dispatches of the enemy. Crobat returns to the field and is subsequently destroyed by a Stone Age. Moxie further increases Heracross's attack, so even, atta so even attackers that will resist Stone Edge will subsequently be destroyed. So this Nido King, for example, resists the Stone Edge but is still destroyed because of Heracross's immense attack. Now then, I hope you have learned something useful from this battle. As you may see, Heracross is a very destructive force. And as you may have realized, the battle is not over until it is truly over. That is all. Dismissed.